Noel Sullivan is a Welsh singer and an actor. He was a member of the British pop group Hearsay, and like the other members of the group, he won his part through the talent show Pop Stars. Whilst with Hearsay, the group's debut single, Pure and Simple, became the fastest selling number one single in the UK singles charts at the time. The group also released a number one album as well as performing on a sellout arena tour across the UK and Ireland. And when the group disbanded just 18 months later, it gave Noel the opportunity to pursue his dream of becoming a musical theatre actor and that is what he's been doing since 2003. And I'm so pleased to say he joins us on the line now. Noel, it's an absolute treat to have you on the show, my friend. Welcome to Cal on FM. Um, well, first off, I've got to say, you know, it's been an absolute pain in the neck for everybody, hasn't it, at the moment? And I was wondering, you know, how, how's it all been? How's it all been for you? Yeah, well, I, well, I think what what's kind of uh, become clear is that you know the arts, the arts seem to be the kind of cherry on the on the cake of a properly working economy. So, um, but the, I, I think you know when everything else is going well, then then people can afford to go out and and all of that stuff. But I do like a lot of people were left high and dry, um, and a lot of people that I know have have kind of left the industry for good now and retrained in other areas. So um, it, it's had a massive impact on yeah. us, I think. Yeah. And, of course, I'm, I, I'm going to be shot down in flames if I don't talk to you about hearsay, but I'll talk to you about that in a minute because uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll take your career and throw it up in the air and come, come at your back to front because your career after... <laughs> sure. Your career after the band seems to be as uh, quite as impressive in musical theatre as it was before, right? Yeah, well, that, that's it. I mean, it, it's funny because people say to me now, "Oh, what do you do? Like, do you still sing? Is it still part of your uh, still part of your life?" And I'm like, "Yeah." I, and it's funny because obviously, if you're not on the telly, people think you've just disappeared. But um, I, yeah, I've been working away kind of pretty much since you say in in the West End and and on the, um, on tours and that kind of stuff. So um, yeah, but theatre was my first love. So so when the band fell apart, it was like the natural place for me to go was it always the plan was it always on your radar as a kid yeah yeah that's what i've done like when i did my sixth form i uh, went to sixth form in Car- cardiff and then um, realized like there was it's like a, you could have a career in musical theater it wasn't until i was a bit older that i saw that um you know and we didn't grow up with that kind of you, you know i think kids there's so many of those kind of reality tv um competitions now that you kind of grow up and, and being a pop star or something is like something that you can dream to do whereas when we were kids it wasn't like that so it wasn't until I had my kind of first taste of musical theatre that I thought oh that, yeah maybe there's something in that for me so the, the history thing kind of took me um, west for a little bit but um, yeah I came back to, to, to kind of where I wanted to be and literally at this this week you uh, about to open in a play called Rhythmics a brand new musical yeah it's all about to open up in the, the Southwark Theatre in London somebody gets Covid and it all gets cancelled you must be absolutely gutted yeah. I, so you know mate I'm still reeling from it a little bit we only found out yesterday that it was it was closing so our last performance was, was on Saturday night and we didn't know it was our last performance so yeah, it, it's, it's just gutting because you know it's five weeks of rehearsal uh, you know Monday to Saturday every week um, and you, we just put in so much time and effort and we only managed to do 10 preview 10 shows before it, it went down and because it's like a smaller venue that you know they don't they can't afford to hire covers for so if if any of the actors get sick that's it um and and unfortunately on monday two of the cast tested positive for covid which is so weird this time around like uh, the last couple of weeks i I, like heard about the occasional person getting it but at the moment in london like it seems like everyone i know has got it so yeah yes but it's intense yeah but i mean logistically as you say putting anything staging anything at this time is uh especially as like with a small cast and when i say a small cast yeah. there's no understudies there's no if somebody goes off then you either send somebody on with a book or forget it right exactly yeah but it, it was it's always going to be a gamble in this time i think and even some of the biggest shows are, are struggling so yeah. and, and people are still a bit iffy about going to the theater you know we had like 18 months of being told to stay in the house and stay away from everybody else and it's going to take a while for people to get to get their kind of psyche around that again and, and feel comfortable in big and um, big spaces i think so is there talk of putting rhythmics on at a later date or I hope so. I, it, it was a great, it was a great show. Um, it was a really great musical, um, and it had, I think, it had loads of potential. So I hope 
uh, it won't be the last um, light of day that it sees. And, and the cast was fantastic as well. It's uh, such a good bunch, uh, a, a really funny bunch. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. And as I say, musical theatre and TV beckoned after here, say, with, uh, I mean, you just went into some of the biggest shows in West End modern day history, I suppose. <laughs> Is it, I mean, easy. was it easy to break into something like that after being well known for something else? Do you know, do you know, it's funny because coming off the back of a pop band, people think like, oh, yeah, you know, that they, they've got this preconceived idea that you can't sing. Yeah. <laughs> I know, that's so weird, yeah. It's, it's, it's so weird, even though we've gone through that whole audition process where we, you know, where, where we were auditioning to sing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's... It, 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 it was it was funny like it, it took me probably three or four productions of me kind of touring about and earning my stripes within, this, within the industry before i started being seen for the really big shows yeah. i didn't just go straight off the back of that and go straight into the west end like, i wanted to make sure that people in it knew i was taking it seriously you know yeah. um i didn't want that i didn't want the rug pulled out from under my feet again so it was um it was an important yeah it's, it took a little bit longer to go that route but in the, in the long run it's, it's served me well i think but I think people, when they see somebody uh, that they know for something else, they, they automatically go, oh, that's them from so-and-so. And then yeah. they go, oh, they can sing. And, and as you say, <laughs> it's bizarre. When you sing. I know. I, I, we, I just think we're brilliant in this country of just pigeonholing people. Like, if you just work on a soap, then you're not allowed to do anything else. So if you just work in the theatre, you're not allowed to do anything else. For us. I think in the States, they're much better at letting, you know, if you do a Broadway show, you can also do TV and film and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. we're, we're a little bit... Um, we're a little bit behind them in, in allowing people a bit more flexibility, I think. Yeah. Let me ask you about School of Rock, because that's one of my uh, one of my favourite shows. My <laughs> wife bought me tickets to see School of Rock a couple of Christmases ago, and we went down we went down to see it, and that is now, if people don't know, that's now an Andrew Lloyd Webber musical. It was obviously yes. the, the Jack Black uh, movie, which is brilliant, and um, yeah. and you played the Jack Black character, Dewey, right? Yes, I did. It was amazing. That was an amazing show. Uh, of the, like to play the lead in an Andrew Lloyd Webber musical on Drury Lane. It's like the stuff of dreams. You know, if I told 15-year-old me that I was going to be doing that, yeah. I, I don't think I would have believed him. But um, it was great, and I got to work with the most talented kids. Um, well, that was also quite intense because you've got three teams of 20 kids. Uh -huh. So so every... And they have to rotate every night. And So, you know, they've all got the same character names, but they've all got different name names. So you're trying to remember six kids' names' names and which faces belong to which characters. Well, if I, if <laughs> so I remember rightly, test. you had to introduce them onto stage at the end, right? Yes. So yeah, literally you have to know their names. It's not just being, like nice backstage yeah. you had to know their names yeah 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 it was an, I, that was the worst part I, that was the most anxiety <laughs> bit of the show for me it's not remember the names or playing the guitar or any of that stuff it was like don't mess the kids names up <laughs> yeah but they were talented i mean super talented those kids i mean it was yeah i mean well well they, they've got because the the production's touring at the moment but they've got like a rock school so these kids like they, they go around different parts of the country every saturday um, and they and they work with these kids like for two years in advance of them getting into the band. So it's like it, it, it's a it's a massive um, undertaking to make sure they're fully stocked with kids who can do the, the job. You know, yeah. because they have to they have to be great little not just little musicians, but they have to be performers as well. So it's it's a lot. It's a big ask, I think. And as I say, you played Dewey, the uh, the Jack Black character, notoriously yeah. chubby. So you had to put a lot of weight on, which I did. I did, which, which at the time I was like, yeah, this is fine, but you know, <laughs> it wasn't fine. I didn't feel good. I didn't feel good. And also the, the, the show was really physical. So you're trying to like, you're bounding around like a lunatic, losing all that weight, but yeah. you have to then take on enough calories to maintain it. So it was, um, you know, you don't always want to eat like that. It's fun sometimes to finish the show and go home and eat a cheese board, but you don't want to do it every day. <laughs> Well, I was thinking because I mean, there's a thing. If if you have to do it, it's horrible. If you don't have to do it, you, you miss it because you, you whatever. Yeah. But is there is there a way of doing it um, sensibly? Is there like healthily? Uh, not really. Yeah, it's just like protein shakes, but, but yeah, just just keeping your face full all the time, really. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was worth it when the kids were laughing. You know, when the, when the audience were enjoying it. 
enjoy, enjoy themselves. We were like, yeah, fine. Yeah. But um, as soon as it was over, I was like, get this off me. My knees are hurting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And also as well, you played uh, Danny Zuko. That was your first musical, wasn't it? Danny Zuko in Greece? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, well, it was my West End debut. I, it was actually the first musical that I did post-TSA. I did it out at the Jersey Opera House right. for a summer season. Um, and then, yeah, and then in 2009, I got to play it in the West End. Um, which was again, that's just a, such a it's such an iconic role. So it was really, really brilliant to play that. Yeah. Um, and who doesn't want to be Danny Zuko? It's like the coolest dude ever. Well, it's one of them, <laughs> isn't it? All the women want to be with him, and all the blokes want to be him. So it's uh... exactly, exactly, it's great. <laughs> but I mean, obviously, you know, it's it's uh, a, 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 a character made famous by John Travolta. Do you do you, do you prefer to kind of create your own characters, or are you, are you okay stepping? Yeah, into I mean, I mean, do you know it's actually the last few years I've, I've got to do a lot more original pieces and i do like i love playing the big roles that have existed for ages i love playing galileo and we will rock you like these these big roles that but but it does become quite mechanical because it exists and it's a big money maker they kind of just tell you to stand on that number and do it like this yeah. so it's fine but you you know there's only so much your creativity can go into that like you've got you know these parameters that don't allow you to be very artistic so um i i do much prefer creating a role from scratch and then being the first person to do that which gives you much more freedom yeah brilliant and I've got to ask you, because quite by coincidence, my daughter put Gavin and Stacey on last night and you, you <laughs> and you popped up on it. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm speaking to, I'm speaking to him tomorrow. This, this is weird. So um, that, you see, you're on a, you're on a date with Doris, the, uh, the yeah. late, great uh, Margaret John. How, how, yeah. how did that come about, man? Because that must have been a um... Randomly, it was just uh, so basically Ruth Jones, like you know what Wales is like. Everybody kind of knows is that, that we're all twice removed somehow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and basically, yeah, um, Ruth Jones got in touch saying, "Could I be?" She was doing the Christmas special, and she wanted me to be Nessa's elf <laughs> on Barry Island. Right. And unfortunately, I was working on something else. But um, I was like, I would love to be in the show at some point. So she just um, she just wrote me in a later date when I was available and that's how and i went actually only to do a little scene where i played uh cards on the on the stag do the night before the wedding and then we had such a laugh that they were like come to the wedding tomorrow as well so um yeah it was great exactly. and and to just be sat in the church on that day be, and i was a massive fan of the show before that anyway yeah so it was just i was just like in my element and margaret john was telling me all because she was such an amazing old theatrical dame you know that and her, and her husband was um frank sinatra's band leader so that she did the tale she was coming out with was just amazing and then people like you know rob bride and what a, what a gem of a man they were just so kind and lovely yeah um, it was great but playing yourself is pretty much the it's like it's almost like the biggest compliment you can get isn't it I think. yeah exactly it was a lovely nod yeah i mean john prescott is like with the only other real person in the church <laughs> and it was uh yeah it was it was it was fantastic it was really good and also as well you 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 meant you were mentioned you were kind of name checked in one of the other episodes and and i thought I wonder what that's like to be just sat watching it the program and then suddenly you're named in it not even a, a character name, your actual name. It's yeah, I know. <laughs> very odd, very odd. So weird. But yeah, and also as well, we car share. When when you? Oh yeah, yeah, I heard about this. I haven't seen it, but yeah, apparently didn't they play it at the end? Yeah, uh, at the end of the season. Yeah, but weirdly Gale, about Peter that, Gale you see, the uh, your 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 sh your uh, pure and simple song. I yeah. hadn't really listened to the lyrics until car share. And it, and they really seem to make sense after watching Cash. Yeah, and they're quite emotional. It was uh, it's quite it's quite a, it's quite a moment. You got you got to check it out. It's fantastic. But anyway, let's talk about hearsay because we we're gonna have to do it. Um, sure. I mean, I, I I can remember at the time it was sort of advertised as kind of giving everybody an inside view into how like take that was formed. Um, yeah. Is that how it is that how it felt for you from that angle? Yeah, I mean, but well, so we didn't because it was the first one. It was the first, you know, that we were the guinea pigs for what is now X Factor and you know Britain's Got Talent and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Uh, before they thought of the noble phone vote. Uh, well, yeah, it was it was mental at the time. We didn't we didn't know how big it was going to be. So 
you know they they build it as this search for the back you know search for a band like the spice girls or take that the way manufactured bands were put together so especially it was a fly on the wall documentary yeah that's how it felt now yeah. as, as you say they're, they're, they're ten a penny these shows but literally you were you were feeling your way nobody had yeah. any notion of what was what you were letting yourselves in for in and yeah in, in i think do you know what that's what i think was great about it is that you know like the first big brother you you and no one knew what was happening the management the tv company the record company no one knew how it was going to fall so it, you know watching something like that for the first time you can't replace that naivety again no. you know once it happens the, the cat's out the bag so um we were lucky to be part of the first i think because everybody's managed to make a nice career out of it and you know i think to to to, to go on like x factor four and just have it be thrown on the scrap people must be much harder so yeah. um I'm, I'm kind of grateful that, that that we were the first you know and everything was new even the, the 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 idea of having judges and nasty judges now now we kind of say who's the nasty one now yeah. <laughs> at that time he was he was literally he must have been getting death threats nigel lithgow i mean he was a nightmare <laughs> of a guy yeah, he was, you know, he was the inventor of the nasty judge, wasn't he? Yeah. Um, and and he loved it. He absolutely loved it. Um, but he he wasn't that bad a man. And he's he's like whisked off to the states now. Anyway, he's going to be um, he's going to be uh, like a shiny face judge. He's got like I saw him in. I went to work in Vegas for a little while, and I bumped into him in LA, and he had had like fresh teeth. He had like a Hollywood <laughs> smile, blonde hair, uh, and a permatan. He just looked so like I I could never like yeah so, so not like nasty nigel you know yes yeah. but i mean at the, for every kid i imagine you either want to be a pop star or a football player and yeah. to be able to kind of live the dream was the dream what you expected it to be well i don't think you ever have you, you don't know what is you, you know it's so it was so far out of the realms of my imagination what happened to us that i don't think any of it expected what happened to happen you know yeah um it was like overnight craziness yeah. and I, it's only over the past couple of years that i started looking back on it with fond memories i kind of it was, it was quite a traumatic time as well so you kind of just pull like the you know the, the, the shutter doors down over it and try not to think about it too much because for all of the amazing stuff that came with it a lot of weird like you know they're like people selling stories the papers and we had our phones hacked and all that kind of stuff so it, you know and they they were coming after Loads of elements of me that, that at 19 years old I had didn't have a full grip on myself. You know, they were going for sexuality and all this kind of stuff. And it yeah. was just a, yeah, it's, it was a damaging place for me to be at that time. But then, it's, you know, now I can, now I've started peeling back all that stuff and I can look back at it with fond memories. And actually, the performing side of it, the, the arena tours, all of that stuff, being on top of the pops, it is, yeah, it's dream stuff, you know, I'm really grateful. Yeah. And, and as you say, I mean, I've, I've interviewed a few people now who've been on The X Factor. And as a parent now myself, I always think, I always see it from a different angle as an older person now. And, and think yeah. it must be so difficult for your, for everybody's parents in your position. Um, to, I mean, for, for you to deal with it, it's bad. But for parents to watch their children being... Yeah, well, yeah, yeah exactly. So and, and I think that now, like, I'm now older than my mum was when I was in here today. Wow. So, like, <laughs> I'd, like, if I imagine having a child and put, go, seeing them go through that process and not being able to protect them like you do in normal life, you know? Yeah. And to then to have your family secrets splashed on the front page of, like, rags, it's just, you know, it was horrible for me to see my mum have to go through that as well. Yeah. Do you get help with dealing with that kind of thing? With this, with no, this no, no, because it was the first one. So they didn't, you know, they didn't like now if you go on Love Island or whatever, they've got, the, you know, they've got help there and they prepare you. But they, we didn't have any of that. It was just like, you know, throw them to the, throw them to the wolves. So yeah. um, it's not anybody's fault. You know, there's no one to blame for that. They just didn't know. They didn't have a duty of care back then. Well, I can remember when Take That split up and Howard suffered quite heavily with his mental health. Yeah. Um, and I thought, well, that's an interesting thing, isn't it? Because I thought he's he's a millionaire now. That guy, he, he hasn't got any woodies in the world. But you give somebody a taste of what they were tasting and what you guys tasted as well, just to just to play yeah. things like Top of the Pops, the Royal Variety, playing arenas, and then just say, right, that's it now, no more. Yeah, it was massive. It was it was mental to be thrown on the scrap heap at twenty one and to be told like that's it, it's over. It's this a it's a high it's a high place to fall from. So um, yeah, I had my struggles, but fortunately, you know, I found my solace in musical theatre because you know, being around actors, you can pretty much it's like the most 
uh, brilliant place to work if <laughs> if you've got any trauma because you can just say anything yeah. in our world and nobody bats an eyelid because they're all bonkers. <laughs> well, long, long may it continue for you, uh, no. But so uh, one one more question before I let you go. We 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 yes. saw uh, we saw I'm a Celebrity finish last weekend. Uh, have you ever yeah. been approached for I'm a Celebrity? Would you do it? Are you into it? I did. Yeah, yeah years ago I was, but um, I t- like I think before I was always a bit. Um, like things like Strictly and that, I was, I was like, oh no, I don't want to do it because I want to like have a career of my own first and then do it when I'm like recognised for doing something as opposed to yeah. just carrying on being a reality TV star. So for years, I was never, I was like dead set against them. But like the older I get, the more I think I'll be game for it at some point. I'm sure. Yeah, knowing our luck, if we got we got asked to do it, it'd be in North Wales. <laughs> yeah, I don't, yeah, that's it. It's, it's really lost its shine now. It's not in Australia. I'm like. I've, I've spent enough time up the mountains in North Wales. I don't need... I, don't, <laughs> I did that for free <laughs> yeah, <laughs> on yeah. some of my holidays. <laughs> well, we, we, I live about uh, 15, 20 miles away from uh, Gwerth Castle. And, um, and my wife said to me, she went, if you ever go on it, I want to... I, I want, she wants me to go on it just so I'll be... Um, uh, so do she can go in the hotel afterwards, but, <laughs> but uh, not that I'm going to be asked. You know what I mean? But anyway. yeah, you don't want the North Wales one though. You want the Versace Hotel in like New South Wales, Absolutely. right? That's that's what you want. That's exactly what you want. Yeah. <laughs> hey, listen, mate. You have a lovely Christmas. Thanks ever so much for speaking to us. I really appreciate it. No worries, mate. All the best to you, and uh, yeah, have a lovely Christmas, and hopefully. Things will get back to normal very soon for you. Yeah, fingers crossed. Have a good Christmas, mate. Cheers, Noel. All right, take care. Take care, Val. Bye. 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 Noel Sullivan from Hearsay on the stage and screen show here on 105 Calon FM. What a gent. What a guy. Inside.